What's up everybody? Unrested back again and I am attempting once more to make a video as I walk home and this time attempting to place my hand over the microphone so as not to pick up as much wind as I had last time and hopefully you can hear me a lot better. Um, the question I actually got when I made my last transportation video was how exactly do you find your way on a map in Japan as some people had heard before that maps are actually a little bit different from uh, the fact that uh, there's actually no road uh, or street names at all in Japan and that's pretty much true. Um, the only roads that would actually have a street name on it would be major highways or major multi-lane uh, roads uh, such as Mitsuji is a six-lane road and that one is of course named because I'm naming it right now but um, people want to know Scott you've talked about this before that you can't really follow zip codes that's true zip codes are hard to follow as well because uh, zip codes actually go in uh, a pie shaped order which you'll only understand if you actually take a look at a map here in Japan and another one is um, how do you go about finding stuff if there are no road or street names? What are you looking at on a map to be able to find your way? And that pretty much uh, concerns landmarks. And I know it sounds silly, but it's actually quite true. You are actually following landmarks the whole time. When you get one of your first jobs, you may actually have to find the school that you're going to. And there may not actually be staff from the company to help you find it. That's my situation now. And with my last job before, each contract I'm assigned a new school because that's the way it works in my district. Uh, they can't take the same uh, teacher on again and again. Uh, you actually have to change uh, after every one year contract, you have to change to a different school, which I personally I like because it's kind of like almost like uh, starting a new job every time but still working for the same company. Uh, so finding your job on the first day yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. Um, I've definitely had times where I've had to either call the school or call the company to give me a little bit of assistance. And that's because, yes, when you do get a map, it's the same as in America, where you would actually just download the map or print it out uh, from a place like MapQuest or Google Maps or whatever you're using. But, like I said before, there isn't actually any uh, road names and you're actually looking at building names. That's more common here in Japan. You're actually looking at the names of the buildings. Now, when you first get here, that can be a bit challenging because a lot of the building names are completely in kanji. So you may have to ask somebody to write out the name of the building, but even then, that's probably not gonna help because buildings tend not to have romaji on them. Romaji is pretty much not used at all aside from road signs, and like I said, not many roads are named, so pretty pointless. Um, so you're going to be going ahead and looking at building names. My advice to you is even if you don't understand the kanji, try to memorize the shape, the drawing, or the stroke pattern, and keep looking back and forth between the two. Usually on the side of each building is an actual uh, kanji naming it. Um, once again, as I've said before, zip codes are not going to help you because they are sporadic and in a pie shape that's not necessarily helpful. And um, you're also going to be looking for if the school is really good or if the company you're working for is good, they've actually marked places on the map. And they will mark places like a grocery store, they'll mark places like a convenience store, something that's very easy to recognize. There are multiple chains of convenience stores which you will easily notice. Lawson's, AMPM, 7-Eleven, and those are easy to pick out and they tend to be markers on a map. Right now I know that sounds a bit strange but it's actually true. So continuing on, how do you actually find the school if uh, you're in a tiny little neighborhood where there is none of that stuff? Well, finding a place on a map while you're inside of a tiny neighborhood that has no popular landmarks such as convenies or grocery stores or gas stations or anything like that. Yeah, this can be a challenge. Um, recently I had this myself and 
I find the best thing for me to do is just ask directions in Japanese uh, from local neighborhood people and they're almost always very accommodating. I've had some people actually walk me to the school or walk me to a station if I can't find that. And so for you, I would say one of the first things you should start to try to memorize is uh, vocabulary that surrounds directions, okay? I'm sure most of you who've even studied the slightest bit of Japanese know nani nani wa doko desu ka, where is the... And the problem you may run into is when you have asked that, then you might not actually understand what they're telling you. And that's why I'm saying try to study and memorize as much direction, hoko directions, <laughs> vocabulary as you can. Uh, obviously, migi hidari, very important. Ichiban chikai eki, where's the closest station? Okay, things like that are important because that's the kind of things people are going to respond back with. And almost, I would say almost 100% of the time, people are going to respond in casual Japanese. If you're studying polite keigo or tenego, as I also call it too, um, you might find yourself confused if you need to have a ma sending on the end of everything to understand what people are saying. Um, so I highly recommend, if you can, study a book that has casual Japanese as well. And study the dictionary too, because most times dictionaries have all forms, especially ones that are English to Japanese and Japanese to English. Now this is just basic stuff, uh, and this is some of the biggest challenges you'll face when you first getting here, is trying to find your way around places. It's still something that's a challenge for me now, but do realize that the Japanese are very understanding about things being difficult to find. Most times your company and your school will be understanding, and most times you can always call them. Some schools and some uh, different company staff actually lend assistance. I had one where every time I went to a new school, they had a staff member there to help walk me to the school. That was uh, very accommodating. But for the most part, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, People completely understand how hard it is sometimes to find stuff here in Japan. And Japanese people are, and I would say this is uh, on a level of being famous, they are famous for being extremely polite about helping you find your way. So never be afraid to ask a Japanese person for directions. They are extremely nice about helping you. Kevin's made a JFAC about that before, and uh, I have too about some of the occasions I've had where I've had to ask and how people have taken the time out of their day to even walk me to the destination. So don't be afraid of that. That is directions for today. If you have any questions about that, as always, feel free to ask. This is JFAC. I am unrested. I'll see you next time.